Today I'm going to find the best vector converters that there are online or within certain programs and I'm going to test them out using three graphics to convert them into vector files. I have this simple hamburger image which should be easy to convert, a more detailed vector style image of this sort of samurai helmet and also this image of a girl with a lot of fades and it's not very vector friendly. I want to put it to the test to see how well it handles this image as well. We're going to start with Vectorizer AI, which I've covered in the past. It's a simple drag and drop interface. Once you've uploaded, you can actually go through and compare. Overall, it's handled some of these things pretty nicely. It looks very clean and seems to be pretty consistent with the shapes it creates. If I head up to download, there's a lot of good options here for file formats and to help control the quality of the output. However, if I go to download, it's going to cost you about $10 a month. So it does cost a little bit of money, but how does it work with the more detailed images? I have the samurai helmet here, and if I zoom in, you can see it's done a really good job of interpreting that detail, creating clean shapes, flat colors. So you can see it's a little bit pixelated here because the preview is still actually a bitmap, but uh, converted from the vector created. But overall, this image looks pretty solid. But moving on. And now we have the girl's face and you can see already that some of the those shadows and sort of gradients very very sharp and harsh graduation most of these platforms work with flat colors only but overall it's not a bad result but still what not quite what we'd be after this is the sort of thing where we'd be better off trying to create something slightly different or tracing it by hand but still i think it's a pretty powerful result considering what we've thrown at a very difficult image so let's move on to the next platform there is links to all of these in the description, but here we have Adobe Express's free PNG to SVG converter. All we need to do, upload our photo, drag in our image, and then we can download our SVG and look at the results for all three images. So I've taken the Adobe Express images into Adobe Illustrator and I can see this one is free, but it's a little rough. A few gaps in between the objects. So what you do get for free, uh, it's not bad, considering you don't pay anything for it, but could use a little bit of work. Not bad though, if you're looking to create some simple printable scalable graphics. Moving on to the Samurai Helmet. Again, a few gaps in the middle, but overall it's done an all right job. It's just the gaps in the middle that kind of let it down. But overall, this image isn't bad considering it's free. You get a little, little funny artifacts along here. So you would need to clean it up if you wanted a really professional result. And of course, we have the picture of the girl. This one has surprisingly done better than Vectorizer AI, although it's still a bit rough. Uh, there's a more gradual sort of fade here, but it's still pretty harsh. But overall, I mean, this was not designed to be an easy image. It was designed to really push the limits of these. And I think so far, Vectorizer AI seems to be the better choice. But moving on to Adobe Illustrator's in-app converter, if I have my bitmap on the page and selected, first of all, I'm going to go up to Window and turn on Image Trace to bring up this window here. I then go to Object, Image Trace, and Make. And we get this black and white thing first, but we also have some settings. First of all, we have some presets, such as sketched art and other things like that. Because we're creating something different, let's go Low Fidelity Photo, and that looks pretty decent. If I move to high fidelity photo, it's got a few extra bits and pieces we don't need. So I'm gonna go back to low fidelity. And I can make some adjustments. We've got full tone or I can go limited. This will change the color a bit. And I also have some more advanced options. I can add or decrease paths here. This is all part of the preset. So, so far, I think if I zoom in, this one has less gaps and is much neater. However, it does have some funny little objects on here. It doesn't quite do as good of a job as I hoped it would. But uh, it's a simple graphic and I think it works in this instance. I can always come over here to paths and bring that down. So after some adjustments, what I've got here is cleaned up, but it's still not great. Again, I would say Vectorizer AI seems to be the best, but uh, still a decent result for an auto conversion. It's actually better than Adobe Express. However, Adobe Express does do some images better. So I'm gonna move on to the other two and just to choose the best settings and we're gonna jump straight into that comparison. But keep in mind when you're ready to actually convert this, head up to Object, Image Trace, and Expand. And you will get your vector image that you can ungroup and edit. So with the Samurai Mask, uh, it hasn't quite captured some of the detail as well as, say, Vectorizer AI. But by bringing the colors down, I did manage to smooth out some of the little bits and pieces. Overall, though, I'm not overly impressed with this, but uh, it's still pretty good. Considering if I use Adobe Illustrator and I need a quick job done, I can do that and then make some adjustments. But moving on to the 
girl's face. Now with the girl's face, it has simplified it a bit. This isn't a bad result. By bringing the colors up a fair bit, it is a little bit easier on those fades, but it adds so many objects. It's very inefficient and also kind of just chunky. It's not really a great job. So I'd say Adobe Illustrator's sort of in-app vectorizer, definitely not very impressed. Now, next we have Vector Magic, a simple drag and drop style. Again, much like Vectorizer AI. Now this, very similar to Vectorizer. Although it took a bit longer, took a few minutes, but the results, pretty solid. Nice, clean, a little bit sharper on the corners. So it's probably not quite as good as Vectorizer AI so far, but you do have different levels. I can move my detail level to low, and that looks pretty good. Because we have a simple image, the low quality has done a pretty good job with this particular image. Now we have more options we can play with here. So again, I'm going to throw the other two images at it, see what options are best, and we're gonna have a look at those as well. But keep in mind, to download the result, if I come over here to PDF, and again, you have to pay. It almost looks very similar to Vectorizer.ai, but uh, so it's about $11 a month, or you can just pay for standalone desktop application, one-time charge. So you've got some options there to choose from. So you can see here, I've got the Samurai Mask, and side to side, it looks pretty solid. We zoom in, and so a pretty good job of neatening up some of these areas. Now this is not super detailed up close. It's, uh, so you can see here, it's done a pretty good job of converting a lot of this. But uh, overall, definitely one of the better ones, and I think for this particular image has done a great job. But with the woman's face, from side to side, this looks pretty good. Now obviously there's a ton of objects in here, but its ability to make sense of it, I think is probably the best so far for this highly detailed image. But uh, like I said, it's still not suitable and it's still a bit rough. If I go back to medium, it is much neater and still does a pretty decent job. We still got that. The way it's handled the fade, I think is better. So overall, I think for the high detailed image, this is probably the best one, but it's still not great across the board. Next is probably an unexpected one for a lot of people, but we have Corel Draw. Now they've actually had a trace function for a while. So I've got my image here. I right click and I go to outline trace, detailed logo or high quality image. We can try both. And it's done a pretty quick job. I zoom in and it's lost some of the detail, but again, we have some settings. Bring the detail up, the smoothing up. So we can choose to smooth or not smooth. If we go too far back, it can get a little rough. But overall, that looks pretty good. I click OK, and we get something pretty consistent. I zoom in, it's done a great job with the shapes. This is, now while Vector Magic was the slowest, this was the fastest. And it's done a really good job of creating some cohesive shapes. There's a few little funny corners and things like that, but we can also try high quality image, playing with that detail, corner smoothness. There's also a few other options here, so you can play with the colors. We can choose the up, up sample modes or illustration. So you get an idea, but overall, pretty powerful. I click OK, and they're both pretty similar, but I think that's a really powerful tool, especially considering the settings. Corel Draws Vectorizer is actually pretty solid, and I would say if I had to choose, I would choose either Vectorizer AI or Corel Draw so far. But moving on to the other images. So we have our samurai helmet and there is a few details I haven't made it across, but overall, I think it's done a pretty neat job of creating a vector from that file. So Corel Draws Vectorizer seems to be pretty powerful, but I move on to the woman's face. We have the photo and the conversion. So this one's a bit harsh. You can actually crank the detail right up and get almost the same level of detail, but it nearly crashed my computer trying to do it. So, um, it seems that you can go further with the Corel Draw Vectorizer so far than any of the other ones I've tested in this video, but um, it doesn't look too bad, a bit too simplified, this one I've gone with, but uh, just it has got a lot of power and definitely I think is right up there as uh, probably second best under Vectorizer.ai. And now we have Vectorizer.io, a completely different service to Vectorizer.ai, and again, a simple drag and drop interface, but this time, you can see we have a lot more options. And so far, this looks pretty amazing. And what we can do, move to an overlap style of vector image where instead of every shape being connected perfectly, shapes actually overlap large areas. So I go overlap and we get this result here. I can zoom in and out and have a look. 
This is the smoothest one I've seen so far. However, it does double up on some of the colors. But keep in mind, we do have some options. So here we have the detail level. At the moment, it is at maximum. I could bring it down to say high. And that seems to have fixed a lot of these issues, but we've lost some of that detail. Let's try moving it up a little to ultra. And so far, that is looking about the best, I think, out of those settings. And of course, we can change how many colors we're using. Bring that down if we want to bring it down to say 24 and then we can further tidy up that image. Now this so far is really impressive. I'm going to zoom reset. Everything here looks exactly as it should and I can choose to download a few different files. I'm going to go PDF and once again, it is a paid service. So you can pay $15 a month. These are the AU Australian prices. So it's probably going to be about $10 Australia, uh, American or you can pay for a one week pass. So a very high quality converter and I'm going to throw the other images at it to see what results we get. Now I've zoomed in and I've got the samurai mask here. If I zoom in and out, once again, we get a nice smooth result. Detail level, still a bit too high. Bring it back to ultra, but I feel like we've still lost a bit such as a tooth missing there. So between ultra and maximum, it doesn't seem to quite work that well. Playing with the settings might improve it, but uh, overall, not a bad result, but still not the best. However, if you're looking for more control than what you'll get at, say, Vectorizer.ai, you have that here that you can play with. Now, the way it's actually worked with the colors here seems to be pretty impressive. I zoom in. It's done a better job of blending them, considering what we've given it. I think that so far that this particular service is the best for the highly detailed image. So it really depends on what you're looking for as to what you're going to get. So I went and tried a bunch of other converters that I found online. I really tried to dig deep here, but most of them just didn't really do a good job. So the ones I've covered in this video are, as far as I can tell, the best ones out there. Now, number one, Vectorizer AI, I think is by far the best service. It is uh, the cheapest for the best quality. If you want something free, the Adobe Express Converter is probably going to be your only option to get something decent, although it is a little messy. But uh, Vectorizer AI seems to be your best option. However, if you're looking for something that is really fast, you can use the Corel Draw Vectorizer, but then you also have to pay for Corel Draw, which is either going to be over like something $1,000 or something, or you're going to be paying $50 or $60 a month or something like that. But if you already have Corel Draw or you're looking into it, this could be a good way to get a lot of vectorizing done because it is lightning fast. Now, I also want to mention that if you want a bit more control, you've got Vector Magic or Vectorizer IO, both solid platforms, and they'll probably be my next underneath the uh, underneath vectorizer.ai or Corel Draw. So that gives you an idea of what I think is going to be the best, depending on what you're looking for. Vectorizer AI being the simplest, probably Vectorizer IO giving you the most control, and Corel Draw being the fastest while also offering a level of control. All of them are going to cost you a little bit of money. Now, I wanted to wrap up with a very direct comparison. Now, these I have brought into Photoshop. The quality is not going to be perfect in regards to there's going to be some pixelation because they are bitmaps, but uh, this is the Adobe Express Converter. And you see we've got like a brown outline here, black outline there, lots of white little gaps. So considering it's free, I mean, like you get what you pay for, but uh, just to be aware, this is what you're looking at up close. You go to vectorizer.ai. So this one is a little pixelated because it's just a screenshot. I don't have an account, but you can see everything's smooth. We've even got a nice little black line underneath the white there. Every sort of seed is nice and round and everything is sort of neatened off perfect. The colors, there's no clashes. Everything is pretty solid, clicks together really well. So this is why I think it's the best one yet. Move on to Corel Draw. We get like a bit of an issue where there's some lips and pieces here where, where objects are sort of being sucked into little points. So although it is a really good vectorizer, it's still got little weird corners and things that really shouldn't be there same vector magic has a similar issue here not as bad double up on colors uh and a few little kind of like ghosting effects on the outside there i'm going to move on to vectorizer io similar thing again we've got some weird issues here some sort of weird corners popping out here and there so this just shows you while they're all really good uh switching back to vectorizer.ai you can see here like i said this is pixelated because i've imported it into photoshop but everything is smooth and looks really, really spot on. So, so vectorizer.ai definitely seems to be the best by far. So especially when you're looking at these details, I highly recommend using that if you can when vectorizing your images. 
But I hope you did find that interesting and useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Links to all of these apps and uh, websites are all down below, so check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video, and I really appreciate you taking the time to sit through to the end. So uh, hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.